United Nations Secretary General Guterres once likened the tragedy in the Gaza Strip to a festering wound on our collective conscience, and the Red Sea crisis that broke out in November 2023 is the spillover of this festering wound. The Red Sea, connecting the continents of Europe, Asia, and Africa, stands as one of the busiest major transportation arteries globally. However, following the conflict between Palestine and Israel, the situation escalated. Initially, the Houthi armed forces in Yemen supported Hamas against Israel and targeted ships associated with Israel in the Red Sea. Subsequently, a multinational escort fleet was formed by the United States, designating the Houthi armed forces as a terrorist organization and launching counterattacks. In response, the Houthi armed forces retaliated, intensifying the crisis in the Red Sea. Ching Chao View column will provide an in-depth analysis of the events unfolding in the Red Sea from February to March. Houthis threaten Bab el-Mandeb Strait, prepare for long-term confrontation. On February 23, sources familiar with the situation disclosed that, regardless of the course of the conflict between Israel and Hamas, the Houthi armed forces in Yemen and Iran are gearing up for a protracted standoff with the United States and its allies in the Red Sea region. Over the past few weeks, the Houthis have been strengthening their positions by fortifying defenses, digging additional trenches, and constructing tunnels in Haja province, located northwest of the Yemeni capital, Sana'a. This region shares a border with Saudi Arabia and overlooks the strategic Red Sea. Houthi Deputy Foreign Minister Hussein al recently issued a warning on social media platforms, stating that the Houthis are considering completely blocking the Bab el-Mandeb Strait in the next few days to pressure for an end to the fighting between Israel and Hamas. U.S. and U.K. launch new joint attack on Houthi militants. Situated at the southern end of the Red Sea, the Bab el-Mandeb Strait serves as a vital maritime channel connecting the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. Blocking this strait could disrupt global trade and oil supply chains. On February 26, with the backing of allied nations Australia, Bahrain, Denmark, Canada, the Netherlands, and New Zealand, the US-UK coalition initiated the second wave of strikes this month against 18 Houthi armed targets across eight locations in Yemen. The targets encompass weapons storage facilities, attack drones, air defense systems, radar installations, and a helicopter. This latest series of airstrikes marks the fourth joint operation conducted by the U.S. and British coalition forces against the Houthi armed forces since January 12, representing one of the most intensive airstrikes. Houthi forces claim Yemeni waters control, attack ships. On March 4, Yemen's Houthi armed forces, supported by Iran, recently announced that ships must obtain a license from the maritime administration controlled by the Houthi armed forces before entering Yemeni waters to ensure ship safety. Two days later, Yemen's Houthi armed forces launched a missile attack on the Greek-owned and Barbados-flagged vessel, True Confidence, causing the ship to catch fire approximately 50 nautical miles off the coast of the Yemeni port of Aden. The attack resulted in damage to the vessel and tragically led to the deaths of two crew members. Responding to the incident, ships from various countries, including U.S. warships, rushed to the scene to assess the situation and aid in rescue efforts. This marks the first fatality resulting from a Houthi armed forces attack on a merchant ship in the Red Sea. EU joins Red Sea guards. In fact, concerning the situation in the Red Sea, as early as February 19, the EU foreign minister announced that the EU would organize a Red Sea escort operation and deploy warships to safeguard international shipping from attacks by the Houthi armed forces in Yemen. France, Germany, Italy, and Belgium intend to deploy warships to the area, with at least four initially joining the operation. Lasting a year, the operation aims to safeguard civilian shipping from Yemeni territory attacks. Despite these efforts, attacks on commercial ships have persisted leading to a nearly 40% reduction in ship traffic through the Suez Canal since the onset of the Red Sea crisis. Spot container freight rates for the Asia-Europe trade have doubled. Major car manufacturers like Tesla and Volvo have halted production at their European factories due to parts shortages. Furthermore, oil tankers and dry bulk carriers transporting grain have also been inevitably impacted. HSBC economist Shanella Rajaneagam's team has highlighted the uncertainty surrounding the resumption of normal transit in the Red Sea. While ideally, disruptions to Red Sea routes would ease in the first quarter of this year, in more extreme scenarios, the disruptions may persist into the second half of the year.